Hey guys, my name is Tom and in this video I want to talk about goal setting and what my goals are for 2020. This will be different from the videos I've made in the past since it won't be a devlog or a tutorial, but it's another step towards my original vision for this channel. Over the next few months I plan to mix in more videos like this in which I'll share my thoughts on topics which aren't directly about game development, but relate in some way. I've never really been someone who set New Year's resolutions, partially because before I graduated the coming New Year was always relatively straightforward since my life largely revolved around school. But I guess the other part is that I never really felt like there was a point, for a few reasons. First, I feel like in our society it's almost become expected to fail whatever resolutions you've set for yourself. If you succeed in sticking to them, you're the odd one out, and I think quite a few people make resolutions knowing they can just abandon ship whenever they feel like it. This makes no sense to me, and I definitely want to stay away from that mode of thinking. Second, if I'm honest, I'm not a fan of social norms. If others expect me to do something just because everyone is doing it, my first instinct is usually to push back. If I don't see a logical reason to go along with the crowd, I usually won't, or at least I'll try not to. On the other hand, I also try to avoid being the odd one out when I can, which is kind of ironic. I suppose that's because I'm more of an introvert, and I usually prefer not being the center of attention. Third, we were forced to set goals at school, which I never liked doing. If I was doing really well in a class, it didn't make sense to me to try and do better, because at that point I'd need to put in a lot of extra time to see a minimal improvement in my grade, and I preferred to spend my time programming. Of course, the other part of that is the fact that it was forced on me. That in itself isn't great, but goal setting in particular just seems like something that's very ineffective unless it's done voluntarily. If you're not allowed to leave class until you've written down three goals for the school year, I can guarantee one thing. You won't care much, if at all, about achieving those goals. And fourth, simply making a New Year's resolution won't bring lasting change. If you decide to start going to the gym three days per week, that doesn't really change anything. You might keep it up for a couple weeks, or maybe even a few months, but eventually you'll quit. Why? Because you've been fueled by the it's a new year and a fresh start energy, which won't last very long. While it's definitely worth harnessing that source of motivation, it's not sustainable and it won't keep you going. The problem is that if after a few weeks you still don't like going to the gym, you'll give up as soon as you run out of the New Year's motivation. Considering that it took making a New Year's resolution to get you to the gym in the first place, and you've been forcing yourself to go since then, you probably didn't like going to the gym and still don't. Once you've lost the New Year's motivation, a single day on which you can't muster the willpower to force yourself to go to the gym is enough to make you fall back into your old lifestyle. Now, it's possible that the thought of returning to that lifestyle is so horrifying that you keep going. However, I think the majority of people don't feel like they need to change badly enough that the thought of not changing induces fear, so chances are that this won't help you, at least not enough. Constantly reminding yourself of what will happen to you and your body if you continue going versus if you quit can still be a great motivator though. In a way, making a New Year's resolution to change your behavior is sort of like covering up a warning light in your car. You're addressing a symptom, not the cause of the problem. Let me explain. Although the analogy isn't perfect, your behavior is essentially a symptom of how you view yourself. Basically, your identity defines how you behave. If you consider yourself to be an active person, you'll have a much easier time going to the gym consistently or doing other types of physical activity than someone who doesn't view themselves that way. What I'm getting at is that if the way you view yourself doesn't align with whatever habit it is that you want to adopt, you'll be fighting a losing battle. You'll be fighting against yourself because your brain doesn't like doing things which don't align with its concept of who you are. I won't pretend I have this all figured out, but I do see a solution to this problem which I'd say is fairly logical. If your identity is the cause of the issue, changing your identity should be the fix, right? Now, some of you might be thinking that this goes against the concept of being who you are and staying true to yourself. However, I'd say that our identity is dynamic. As the world we live in changes, we adapt, and whether we like it or not, our identity and therefore our behavior also changes. So then the question becomes, can we influence how our identity changes? I think we can, or at least I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to. Think about where you are now, and where you want to be in a year from now, and then visualize what kind of person you'd have to become in order to bridge the gap between those two versions of you. If you then consider what that better version of you would do in any given situation, I'm pretty sure that slowly, you'd become more and more like that version of yourself. However, I have to admit that I haven't done this personally, but the more I think about it, the more sense it makes, so I'm definitely going to try this in the coming year. I do want to be clear about something though. Despite all of what I just said, there's definitely value in setting goals because of the clarity that can give you. And what better time to refocus on your goals than at the start of a new year? Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts about everything I just mentioned. I'm only just beginning to figure this stuff out myself, so please let me know whether or not you agree or disagree down in the comments section. And if you have any personal experiences related to this topic which you'd like to share, don't hesitate to do so. 
With all of that in mind, here are my goals for 2020. I consider most of these as more of a guideline, mainly to give me some clarity on where I need to be directing my energy, and to give me a quantifiable idea of how I did at the end of the year. On YouTube, I want to reach 5,000 subscribers and 250,000 total views by the end of the year. This might sound very ambitious, and I myself find those numbers absolutely mind-boggling, but I actually think it might be possible. Over the last 4 weeks, an average of about 37 people have been subscribing to my channel every week, which is pretty insane. If this were to continue, I'd reach 1000 subscribers at some point in May. However, the rate at which I'm gaining subscribers has also been growing, so I'll probably hit 1000 quite a bit sooner. As for views, recently I've been getting around 300 per day. If that continues, I'll reach somewhere around 120,000 total views by the end of the year. But if things keep growing the way they are now, I think 250,000 might actually be pretty reasonable. Saying that feels really strange since that's such a massive number, but you guys are making this possible and I really can't thank you enough. Once I reach 1000 subscribers and rack up 4000 hours of watch time, I can get monetized on YouTube, at which point it's quite likely that YouTube will start recommending my content more, since all of a sudden doing so will make them money as well. After all, YouTube is a business and one of their goals is to make a profit. Considering all of this, I think these goals are a stretch, but still achievable. However, these are outcomes I'm hoping for which I unfortunately have no direct control over. My real goal for YouTube, and our Discord server for that matter, is to maintain the growth of this community, and as long as I keep making videos that provide value to you guys, I have no doubt that will happen. It's fun to think about the crazy numbers I might achieve in the coming year, but I'm not super concerned about falling short of those goals as long as this community continues to grow. As for my game development project, my goal is to have a playable version by the end of March. For anyone who wasn't aware, I upload bi-weekly devlogs where I talk about the process of building a multiplayer game. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll link the playlist in a card in the corner right now, as well as in the description. This goal gives me 3 months, which seems like way too little time, but before everyone gets too excited, let me explain what I mean by playable version. I'm not talking about an alpha build or anything, as that wouldn't be achievable. I simply want to have a version of the game which I can give to a few of my friends to mess around with. This version probably won't be very feature complete at all. If I can playtest things with friends, I have something to look forward to while I'm developing a feature. Although I'm looking forward to having an actual fleshed out version of this project, that's simply too far in the future to be a consistent source of motivation. In order to be able to properly playtest anything without it being a huge hassle, I'll need a way of distributing the game files automatically. So, before the end of March, I intend to build a launcher for the game which auto-updates files when there's a new version available. I'm not sure yet if this is how I'll distribute official releases, but I think it'll be beneficial to learn how to build a launcher. I may also set up a database along with a login server, although that isn't really necessary for playtesting, so I might prioritize things like client prediction instead. I don't really have any end of year goals for the project, mainly because there's still so many decisions to make about what I want this game to look like that it's pretty much impossible to set goals which I know are challenging but achievable. I think once I've got a version I can share with my friends, I'll be able to more clearly decide what direction I want to take the game in. I've only decided on one goal which relates to my health, and that's to be in bed by 1045 at least 4 days of the week. I think improving your sleep is one of the simplest things you can do to drastically improve your health, at least in theory. In practice, it's actually pretty difficult. I've often tried to start going to bed earlier, but even if I succeed for a few nights, eventually I find myself staying up way too late again. 4 days per week should be doable since that still leaves room for playing games with friends or watching movies with family, which often go past that time, but this might be the most difficult goal to achieve. I'll have to track this somehow, maybe I'll set up a spreadsheet or something of the sort. Hopefully that'll help me stay on track. Finally, I'm not going to hide it, one of my goals is to turn YouTube into a source of income. Unfortunately, I have no idea what the earning potential is from ads in the game dev niche, so I can't really aim for a certain amount because I don't know what's achievable. To accomplish this, I'll continue uploading a video every week and responding to all the comments, but aside from uploading more frequently, I don't think there's too much more I can do to influence this. My very last goal for 2020 is to invest $5,000. Considering that I currently don't have a regular job, that's a very large amount of money, but I want to start investing as soon as I turn 19 so I can take maximum advantage of compound interest. I would have already invested quite a bit, except that where I live, the age of majority is 19 instead of 18, like just about everywhere else, meaning I can't open my own investment account until I'm 19 years old. So there we have it. Those are my goals for the coming year. Let me know in the comments below what kind of goals you've set for yourself, or if you didn't set any, why not? I'd also love to hear your thoughts about shifting your identity to help you achieve your goals more easily. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you got any value out of it and you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash the like button. 
It only takes a moment and it really helps me understand what kind of content you guys like. If you're looking for more, check out my devlogs and my networking tutorial series and come join the community on Discord. There's an invite link in the description. Also, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.